Cami Chaos. That's right. Is that all? Is it? Oh, okay. I was like, all no, right. There's more. There's more. Cami lives, works, parents, and plays in the rainy city of Portland, Oregon. She's had a love of WordPress and WordCamps since she stumbled upon the first WordCamp Portland when she became a reluctant and then excited volunteer. <laughs> she now works at Automatic, a little company you may have heard of it, as a community organizer for the WordPress open source project, where she gets to, <laughs> gets to, work with WordCamps and their organizers every day. Cavi Chaos. Hi. Um, welcome to You Don't Say, The Importance of Earnest Feedback. Um, one of my favorite plays is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. And one of my favorite things currently is to talk about feedback and the importance of feedback. And when I get nerdy about one thing, I tend to like rope in other things that I'm nerdy about. Um, and so when I was thinking about what's most important in feedback, I kept thinking about being earnest and being honest. Um, and so you will have to bear with me as I loosely tie the importance of being earnest to this talk throughout it. Before we dive in, um, I always like to know a little bit about the person who is talking at me um, so that I can feel a little more comfortable. So I'm going to introduce myself. Not that Dave didn't do a lovely job, but I am Cami Chaos. And he did pronounce my name correctly. Um, and yes, that is my real name. <laughs> and yes, it is spelled just like the Agents of Chaos on Get Smart. If you happen to love that television show. Um, I'm a community organizer for the WordPress Open Source Project, and I focus on WordCamps. Yay! So if any of you are organizers or volunteers or speakers, I just want to start by saying thank you. Um, I grew up in California and in Texas, um, but I did relocate to Portland about 25 years ago, where I live with my partner, my teenage daughter, two very old cats, and more plants than I'm comfortable admitting to you right now. If you need to find me anywhere on the internet, you can find me as Cami Chaos almost everywhere, except for Gmail, because someone took that before I got it. Um, and if you need to contact me for some reason, you can email me at camichaos at automatic.com. And just so we get this out of the way, this is my very first WordCamp OC. And now that you know some stuff about me, I'd like to get to know you a little bit, because I'm going to do that dreadful audience participation thing. This is the last talk before lunch, and I'm hungry. <laughs> and I know all of you are hungry. So uh, who else is this their first WordCamp OC? You're lying. Put your hand down. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Is it anyone's first WordCamp? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> welcome to WordCamp OC, and welcome to WordCamps. Um, and it might be weird to have somebody welcome you to a WordCamp when it's their first time too, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, so, now that we know each other a little bit better, we have some trust and we have some common ground. I wanna talk to you today about feedback, which is not necessarily a common WordCamp discussion for people to have, um, but it's become really important to me over the past few years to start to recognize the way that we both give and receive feedback, not only in the open source project, but within our work relationships, within our interpersonal relationships. Um, and so it's something that I've gotten nerdy about in the last year. And it's something that I've gotten really impassioned about. And I want to find a way to help other people learn to better give feedback. Um, at its most basic, feedback is one human being attempting to help another human being. No matter how obscured or confused that communication becomes, because it can get really muddled, um, it can be shouting, it can be quiet, uh, it can be completely confused. Sometimes someone's giving you feedback and they don't even know that they're doing it. Um, but it is is just basically a way to communicate something that someone else needs to know or something that you feel you need someone else to know. Um, so before we get too heavy into feedback, I think we need to kind of seek out and acknowledge what our own personal relationships with feedback are. And I'm sure that there's someone in the room who this isn't their relationship with feedback, but for me, <laughs> this is a visual representation of my relationship with feedback. And some people might be like, oh my gosh, you got a Jackson Pollock slide. It's amazing. It's great art. It's not. This is messy, and it is scary, and it is confusing. And I did it in five minutes because I needed a slide here, and I didn't know what to do. 
but feedback makes me uncomfortable. It makes me nervous. It makes me like want to do the ostrich thing and stick my head in the sand and just pretend I can't hear what anyone's saying. And that's giving feedback and receiving feedback. So basically, anytime I have a meeting in which I need to give or receive feedback, my impulse, my first like natural instinct is to cancel the meeting and like start coughing and pretend I'm sick because I don't want to say things to people that they don't want to hear. And I don't want to hear things that I don't want to hear. Um, <laughs> right? But it's part of my work. And it is, strangely enough, it's part of my entire life. I have a partner. I have a daughter. I have a community, a work community, a, an open source community. I've got school communities, part of a startup community. And feedback is a never-ending stream, both receiving and giving. So not having a comfortable feeling with feedback, as you might imagine, can make things a little bit difficult because what I would really like to do is bolster people and make them feel good about what they're doing um, and give them the skills and the information and the motivation to keep working on what they're working on, whether that is WordPress contributors, whether that is my daughter, whether that is my coworkers, um, or whether that is my partner who's an amazing chef and I would really like to give him that feedback so he'll continue cooking meals for me. Um, <laughs> But sometimes that feedback isn't great. And so when you're bolstering, it's fantastic. But you can't just say good things and expect feedback to work. Uh, this is the last line in Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest. But I'm going to call it a jumping off point. I've now realized for the first time in my life the vital importance of being earnest. And my take on this is completely different than the plays, if you've seen it. Um, the importance of being earnest isn't the only thing to take away here. Um, what I want you to understand is that you can be honest and earnest without saying everything that comes into your head. You can be honest and open without being cruel. Um, and that feedback isn't just something that you happen to be good at. It's not something that you're like, you woke up one day and you're like, I can tell people everything and they will completely understand and they will be able to apply that and make themselves a better person. It's not how it works. It is a skill. It is something that you uh, have to gain and that you can refine and that you can work on. Uh, but for some of us, it takes getting out of our comfort zones. So as seen in this last slide, how many of you would relate your feelings about feedback, either giving or receiving, more with this than with like the tranquil nature scene we see outside the window? Does anyone love getting feedback? I'm not sure if I believe you, but I'll take it. If it was someone else, did you say you like getting feedback? Yeah? yeah? What do you What do you like about getting feedback? I like uh, seeing a different view. Seeing a different point of view? And what about you? Okay. Good. So you relish it. Yeah? All right. You have to. Okay. Why do you have to? Oh, and yeah, you have to adapt what you're doing to what they want. Okay. So this is the audience participation time. And I would like anyone who's comfortable, please share with me the last time that you gave feedback. And if you're not sure what that means, I can clarify. But when's the last time someone here gave feedback? Go ahead. Yeah. A week and a half ago. A week and a half ago. What was the feedback? Can you share that? Oh, no, you can't share that. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That's a sensitive community topic. <laughs> I should not have told him to come in this room. <laughs> All right. So when's the last time someone who's not Adam gave feedback? Bree? Uh, personal feedback. It, absolutely. I'm going to talk about personal feedback in this talk. Last night. Last night. What was the feedback, if you can share it? Yeah. Um, so my cat is sick. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I gave, I gave some, some kind feedback on Kind that. and constructive yeah. feedback? Yes, and it was a, a change. Okay, so. excellent. Uh, when is the last time anyone here liked a tweet? Anyone here like a tweet today? Yeah? Comment on a blog post? Leave a Yelp review? Talk about french fries? Yeah? <laughs> Um, those are feedback. So anyway, what, what's the last, what is the last feedback that someone else gave? Any kind of feedback at all? You in the back. Uh, 
Um, someone was asking me about, oh, uh, a friend of mine was asking about uh, template tags in WordPress. So I, I gave him feedback, showed him a little bit of code, mm -hmm. solved the problem, and that was about a half an hour ago. Excellent. <laughs> well done. And you over here, you had some feedback? Excellent. Are any of you involved in a mentor relationship? Yeah, anytime you mentor someone or are being mentored, that's the giving and receiving of feedback. Uh, anytime someone hasn't done something that they should do, that's the giving of feedback. Um, there are three general types of feedback. And so, if any, does anyone else have anything they want to share about feedback that they've given or received before we move on to the types of feedback? All right. So. The examples that you threw out, everything that I'm going to talk about, all falls into three categories. Appreciation, coaching, and evaluation. And they're all incredibly common. We don't necessarily think about what kind of feedback we're giving when we're giving it. Um, and I feel like it's common knowledge what each of those means. But as my partner and some very, very smart other people say, common sense is not common. In fact, it's only common to you. So I want to make sure that we have a common ground and a common understanding of what each of these three types of feedback are. The first one is appreciation. And this is where you tell me how much you like my talk. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's lovely feedback. Awesome. Appreciation is fundamentally about the human relationship and connections. Um, but in a project like ours, it's very important work. Like making sure that you show appreciation is what keeps the wheels moving in open source projects, in volunteer positions, um, in nonprofits. When you appreciate someone or something that someone is doing, you're making sure that they feel heard. You're making sure that they realize that their work means something to someone. Um, you're saying, I see you, and you're recognizing that they exist and that they matter. The problem with appreciation is that sometimes we don't understand how to keep it appropriate and how to keep it on topic. And so when you're appreciating someone, make sure that you're appreciating them in a way that is specific and appropriate to the relationship that you have with someone. Um, for As an example, you walk around a WordCamp, and someone says something really smart, and it's fantastic to be like, that thing that you said was life altering. It caused me to think about things in a completely different way. Thank you so much. You're very wise. That's great. Um, walking up to someone and saying, hey, your hair smells amazing when you don't know them. <laughs> um, it is appreciation. Awkward. It is awkward. And it is not kind of a welcome source of feedback, unless that happens to be like, your kid, hey. Did you change shampoo? Your hair smells great, or your partner. Um, so make sure that you keep appreciation appropriate to the level of relationship that you have with the person you're sharing it with. Coaching. Um, coaching is aimed at trying to help someone get better or to grow and change. Sometimes it's getting out of a box that they have placed themselves in. Sometimes it's improving something that they're already doing. Um, but coaching is a way to take someone who has knowledge and gained experience and share it with other people. So when we talked about mentoring earlier, mentoring is, is a form of coaching. Coaching is obviously a form of coaching. Um, and I know I saw some hands earlier, people who have like a formal mentor relationship. Everybody? Yeah? Uh, you look like you want to talk. Uh, <laughs> what am I saying? So you're in a, are you the mentor or the mentee? I am the mentor. Okay. Uh, and what are you mentoring on? I trained somebody to be a front-end developer from nothing to nice. working in a, a marketing uh, firm. He nice. just got his job. So it's been two years of me working with him over the internet. And it's, it's very fun and also quite frustrating sometimes. It is, isn't it? I love him to death. What is, the, what is the most rewarding aspect of that feedback, the appreciation, the feedback, the mentor relationship? Uh, seeing somebody get something good for all their work, okay. really. Awesome. Yeah. And what's the most frustrating? <laughs> <laughs> Having to repeat myself. OK. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I feel that one. Okay. Especially when I know that someone is very good at taking notes. Yeah. I hear you. But, and that slides into evaluation. Coaching and evaluation are like anxiety and depression. They are best friends. Um, coaching and evaluation often slide back and forth with one another. 
Um, appreciation can sneak in there too. Uh, but evaluation should not be uh, emotional. It shouldn't be easy. It should be based in context. It's an assessment. It is an evaluation of how you're doing. And this is the form of feedback that, at least in America, we start children with the very earliest. You send a child to kindergarten, and they get a report card. And it might not be the letter scale, but we tell them what they're doing. We evaluate their performance. We evaluate their behavior. We say, hey, you're doing this well, or hey, you're doing this poorly. Thumbs up. Good job. Thumbs down. Mm. We need to redo the finger painting. Um, and then we keep moving on, and we strengthen and deepen the understanding of what that evaluation is with the letter grades, A, B, C, D. We skip E, F. Um, and that's our earliest relationship for most people with feedback and evaluation. Um, but it's hard not to let evaluation be clouded. Um, it's hard to just objectively evaluate a situation or be objectively evaluated without having some really intense emotions around it. Because unless someone is just saying, yes, you're perfect, thank you, everything you have done is great, that's definitely not coaching, that's just pure evaluation, or A, everything is awful and you're fired, everything in the evaluation in between is a way to then move into coaching and improve what's happening. Clear feedback. Under, uh, has an understanding of what kind of feedback you're giving. So if you are in a mentor relationship, you should not necessarily be evaluating them heavily. You do have to do a little bit of evaluation because you need to know how to help them move on. But the goal there is to teach them to grow and to help them move further along. If you are evaluating, you should not be coaching or mentoring. You should be letting them know the facts of what's happening. And if you're appreciating someone, thank you. I appreciate that you appreciate people. Um, so if someone asks what you think of the design of their most recent site, and you answer that question, you are evaluating them. Uh, if someone asks you how they can improve the design of their most recent site, and you answer them, you are coaching them. If someone asks what you think of their latest site, and you just say, it's awesome, nothing wrong here, you go. It's evaluation and appreciation. All right, but as I said before, please keep all topics uh, relevant to what's going on. You don't want to get into a feedback loop with people that is not on the level of relationship that you have. Um, but also you need to be honest. And you need to not necessarily say everything that comes into your head. <laughs> because sometimes our relationship with the feedback we're giving is more problematic for ourselves than it is for the person that we are giving feedback to. And this is something I haven't always been terribly good at. Um, so when I started learning about feedback heavily, it was a class I took last year after my sabbatical. And one of the exercises that we did, we were asked to think of a time that we had given feedback. And then to look back at the feedback we'd given and figure out what job we were trying to do with it. And so I'm going to tell you what I consider to be a large feedback error on my part that I experienced just before I went on sabbatical last year. I had been preparing everyone for the fact that I was going to be gone for three months and letting them know that if they needed to talk to someone at my work, they could email the, the shared queue and if someone would help them. A, a particular person that I had been working with emailed the queue and said, I need to know who my contact is going to be while Cammie's on maternity leave. And my teammates saw this email and went, oh my gosh, Cammie's pregnant and she didn't tell anybody. And she really quickly assigned it to me so that no one else would see it. And then she sent me a personal message. And she was like, if that's true, congratulations. I'm happy for you. But I wish that you'd felt comfortable sharing that with me. And I had no idea what she was talking about. And I went and I opened the email and I read it. And I slammed my computer down. And I stormed out of the room. And I poured some tea. Um, and I was really mad. I was really upset. I had a very emotional response. And it came in two big parts. The first one was, that's the most sexist thing I've ever heard in my life. Of course you think I'm going on maternity leave. I'm a woman. Um, and I stormed around ranting about that for a little while. And I was very upset. And then I was like, oh, it's because I've gained so much weight. And it's true. I had gained a significant amount of weight. And I was like, maybe he thought I was pregnant because I've gained weight. And then I realized that I'd never met this person face to face. <laughs> because we work on the internet, right? Um, and I, I was just, nothing could really calm me down, but I did the hard work of trying to calm myself down and convincing myself that I had 
climbed out of my feelings box and found a good, calm place. And I sat down and I answered the email and I let off a feminist rant, the likes of which no one has seen since, about how it's never acceptable to make an assumption about a reason that a woman would take time off work and how dare you. I earned my sabbatical just like every man in my company. And by the way, you're welcome to email this email address and someone will help you. Um, and I took that with me on sabbatical. <laughs> I took those feelings on sabbatical. And then I came back and I took this class. And that was the feedback that had stuck with me, the feedback that I had given, because it didn't feel right. I was still upset. Um, but later on, I kind of realized this poor man didn't know me. I have no idea why he thought I was going on maternity leave. Maybe he had me confused with someone else. Maybe he heard me say that I was looking forward to just spending time with my kid when I was on my sabbatical. I'm not often specific about her age. There are any number of reasons. It could have been just an innocent mistake. He just didn't know what a sabbatical was. Um, and the job that I was trying to do turns out to be let him know that he had reached the right email address. <laughs> That's what I needed to do. Who is going to be my contact while Cammie is gone? We don't know, but you have to send email to this email address. And I take that moment with me anytime I give feedback now. And it seems simple to say, oh, now every time I have to give feedback, I consider what job I'm trying to do. But it's something that I've really tried to do mindfully in all parts of my life. And so I present to you an example that I think most people can relate to. My kitchen is often very dirty. <laughs> it is not my job to clean the kitchen because I have a teenager, and that is what things that my teenager is good for. It is her job to clean the kitchen, but my kitchen is often not clean. And in the past, the conversation has gone something like this. Me, the kitchen isn't clean. Her, OK. Me, please clean the kitchen. Her, when I'm done with this video, do it now. Her massive nuclear scale meltdown, freak out. Ah, you're so mean. This is so unfair. What's wrong with you, me? Why are you so lazy? I just want you to clean the kitchen. Why can't you get it done? I need the kitchen clean. Um, and then like everyone's rolling eyes. And everyone's blown out of proportion. And the feedback I was giving my child is evaluation. You have failed to clean the kitchen. That is your task. Um, and now I kind of stop and I say, Kalia, will you please clean the kitchen? It isn't clean. And we can all accept that this is feedback, right? This is feedback. OK. Um, and she says, when I'm done watching this video, she's watching probably a game walkthrough on YouTube. Or she's reading a book and trying to change the world. It's one of the two with her. Um, and so I say, please clean the kitchen. And she says, when I'm done with this video, and I want to freak out and say, why can't you just do the thing that you know you're supposed to do? I want it done right now. And then I stop and I say, Cammy, what do you want to have done here? Do you want to get in a fight with this person? Or do you want the kitchen to be clean? The job that I would like done is to have the kitchen clean. And so I stop and I say, how long is that video? And she says something like 3 minutes and 27 seconds, mom. And I stop and I say, OK, the job that needs to be done is the kitchen needs to be clean. Obama's not coming over, right? There's no reason that my kitchen needs to be clean in the next four minutes. And so I say, OK. And I walk out of the room, and no one rolls their eyes at anyone. And miraculously, usually within half an hour, she is in the kitchen cleaning it up. And there may be some evaluation there. Yeah, there may be some evaluation. Uh, she doesn't wipe the counters still. She would prefer just to put dishes in the dishwasher and not wash the pots and pans. But it's still getting done. I am getting the job done that I need done. And I'm giving her feedback that she can accept because I'm doing it in a way that she understands and appreciates being respected. So whatever the type of feedback we're giving, whether it is to our peer, uh, to our boss, to someone that works for us, to someone in the community, to our child, to our partner. We should strive to give it in a way that respects the relationship we have with that person and that is constructive and kind. Um, and when you are giving feedback that is specific to a project or to a task or to a goal, you should make sure to keep that feedback about the project. In no world has it ever helped when I tell my teenage daughter that she is lazy 
when what I want her to do is clean the kitchen. That is personal feedback. <coughs> I need to give her construction feedback. The kitchen isn't clean. Please clean it. Um, so please keep all of that in mind. Now, when feedback is delivered in anger, what happened when I told my daughter all, blah, 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 all the things? She responded negatively. Her receiving of the feedback was broken. My giving of the feedback was broken. So when we give heated feedback or angry feedback, it creates a, a feedback loop. It creates kind of a vicious circle where someone is more likely to lash out and pretend they can't hear you or ignore the feedback that you're giving as uh, incomplete or incorrect. If you give someone angry feedback, they can just blow it off. They're like, yeah, I don't like you either. No, this is fine. Um, if you give someone concise feedback on topic, hopefully it is something that they will absorb. When I receive concise feedback about a topic, I am more likely to stop and rationally think, what job were they trying to do there? Um, or how can I apply this? Even if I don't think it's right, how can I apply it? So. When you are respectful and kind, people are less likely to block you on Twitter. Um, <laughs> and you are more likely to give them good feedback and receive good feedback from them in return. Because receiving feedback and receiving feedback well is the flip side of the coin. Um, for every feedback that is given, we also need to consider how feedback is being received. And we've touched on that giving feedback in a way that the other person can take. Sometimes you need to express yourself. Someone will give you feedback in a specific way and it's not a way that you can hear. Sometimes you need to say something. Sometimes I hear feedback when I'm in a conversation and I do much better when I receive feedback in writing. When I can see what someone is saying, when I can look at it and take the emotion out of it and understand what job they are trying to do, what feedback do I need, and when I can kind of absorb it uh, on my own time. Not everyone is like that. So if you are in a formal feedback situation, it is always appropriate to give the person giving you feedback, feedback on how you'd like to receive the feedback. And I'm gonna say feedback four more times. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Um, ultimately, we have control over giving feedback, but the best control, the strongest control we have is how we receive feedback. Um, and also what kind of feedback we receive. Um, this is where I tell you <laughs> that sometimes you don't read the comments. Um, it is absurd to have a hard and fast rule about what one should and what should not read. More than half of modern culture depends on what one shouldn't read. And I was having a great conversation with a woman earlier today about things she chooses not to read anymore because they make her stressed out, they make her unhappy. Um, the feedback that she, I see you back there, you're hiding, yes. Um, and, and I feel very much the same way about news, about feedback, about so many things. When we bring in so much negativity, sometimes it's not something that we can cope with anymore. Um, and it's important not only to understand what feedback you should bring in, but what feedback you shouldn't bring in. Um, so when you receive feedback, make sure that you're being mindful of yourself and your relationship with that feedback. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself and make sure that if, if it's feedback you actually don't need to have, that you distance yourself from it and find a way not to receive it. That being said, in most cases, any feedback, even angry feedback, is something that can help you. If it's an angry troll incorrect feedback, it helps you learn how to ignore feedback. If it's feedback that's angry but has a core of truth, it helps you kind of understand, wow, something that I have said or done has really significantly impacted another person's emotional state. Um, and they feel so deeply about it that they don't even know how to express that feedback to me. It doesn't mean that they have the right to be angry with you. It does mean that you can learn something from what they're saying. Um, but in most cases, I do think we should just avoid reading the comments. Um, that's my prepared feedback section. I would love to hear any questions or for anyone here to share their relationship with feedback or talk about feedback if they're interested in doing that. Otherwise, you can all sneak out to lunch a few minutes early. Oh, and here's some phenomenal resources. Those two books in particular are fantastic. Anybody, questions, comments? Desire to head to lunch? I think we can all go. Yes. Oh, you have a question? I didn't want to end, but you, I did have a question. Okay. Um, a lot of times our feedback is generally negative. Yes. How do you 
teach us to balance it out or so there's like a thing I, we give fake feedback yeah. it's there's a thing I didn't talk about there's a the most common talk the most common type of feedback coaching that people give is that it's the poop sandwich have you all heard of this form of feedback yeah so it is people will say you should always buffer uh, negative feedback with two compliments um, I think this is the worst way that you can possibly give feedback because it makes you be insincere with someone. So you're not being honest, you're not being open, you're not telling them anything that it's important for them to know. And you're kind of discounting the important thing that they could really learn from. So instead of spending your time thinking about two positive things so that we can counteract that generally negative feedback, I find a way to make that feedback feel constructive. Um, but also, it is really important to me to be grateful and thankful for the wonderful things that people do in my life. So I try to make a point of giving positive feedback. And I wish other people would too. It doesn't have to be like, oh, you look pretty today. That's a nice dress. I mean, it, it can literally be anything. You look like you're in a great mood. Um, yeah. You project. I don't know why they put that microphone on you. Uh, yeah, just when, when someone... When someone does something that you appreciate, don't, as long as it's appropriate, don't keep it to yourself. I mean, we're, we ultimately are the people who decide how much positive feedback there is in our lives. I sound like a hippie. I know it. Yes? How do you give feedback to somebody which is closed for feedback? If they turn off their comments and everything. How do you give feedback to someone if they do not want feedback, if they've closed their comments? So in the social media age, that is what we use Twitter for most of the time. I mean, if they close comments, uh, if, if you do not have access to that person in person, you cannot email them, um, you can't leave a comment, and it's something important that they know, I would go ahead and send a kind DM. I, I understand the need for calling people out with things, but I prefer to call in first and see if I can resolve the need to give feedback that way. Same with the company. Mm -hmm. I, I notoriously will tweet at companies when I'm not getting... If I'm on hold for an hour and a half, I tweet at them instead. Yeah? This is perfect because I was going to suggest that if you get good help from a company like Bank of America or the IRS, tweet it out. Yes. Because I've done it before and I even got a response from Bank of America, a direct message to find out who that person was because I really wanted to thank them personally. That's awesome. I have been, I, I like shoes, people. I like shoes. I'm not even going to lie. Zappos has the best customer service, and I love, I love to say nice things about them. So, yeah, appreciate people, appreciate companies. Um, and you know what? Appreciate the people that are close to you. Appreciate the people that you work with. Appreciate, as if you appreciate someone, please let them know. I appreciate all of you. You sat through my talk. Thank you. So my question was actually going to be exactly that. Okay. I'll, I'll let you be a hippie for a second. How do you express gratitude in your life, and what is the appropriate amount not to sound like you're crazy? Okay, so that one, I kind of probably err on the side of crazy sometimes, <laughs> and I admit that. Um, I try my best. So in my personal life, my partner is a very grumpy man. He is very grumpy and very surly, and everyone often wonders how... Uh, we've got like the Mary Poppins and then the old man in the sea grump situation. <laughs> and people often wonder how that works out. And I hope he's not watching the live stream, but it's true. Um, and so I make sure to tell him regularly. I, well, he is an amazing cook and he cooks for me all the time. And that is one of the ways that he appreciates me. Um, he knows that I work hard, and he knows that cooking is exhausting me. He is appreciative of that. He doesn't mind cooking. He cooks for me. And then I tell him how good it is. Um, uh, I regularly remind him that the work he's doing is really for the benefit of the community. You kind of have to hone in. There's, like, people talk about people having love languages. Um, giving people compliments and giving people positive feedback can be a love language. With my daughter, she needs to hear that she's loved. She needs to hear that she is going to be okay. She needs to hear that her generation can make the future a better place. Same with her, her friends. Um, I have a really close relationship with several of my teenagers' friends for some reason, um, and I appreciate them. With work, we have a kudos system, um, but we can only give three kudos a month. And so I make a point of like popping notes in Slack. When someone on my team does something awesome, I let them know. Um, when a checker at the grocery store is super nice to me and I didn't have to self-scan, I tell them how nice they are and, you know, how I appreciate that they smile every time I come in. And I think we just have to work hard to keep it relationally. Like, I was talking about having the relationship with the person. 
you can always give positive feedback, you can always give appreciation, as long as you're mindful of the relationship you have with that person. And I'm mindful of the fact that the food trucks are downstairs. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much.